According to the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association, flying visual flight rules into instrument meteorological conditions, basically the clouds, is the worst weather-related cause of fatalities amongst pilots in non-commercial fixed-wing aircraft, with about an 86% fatality rate. But it's not just VFR-rated pilots that get into this trap. About a third of those pilots were actually instrument-rated, and yet they were flying visual flight rules into instrument meteorological conditions. We got to talk about that. Now, I am an instrument pilot, but just the other day I was flying uh, from Omaha to Beulah and I decided to divert to a different airport because of something that has to do with this. But first, I want to talk about my checkride experience when I was getting my IFR rating because it's crazy. Now, if you watch my previous video, it'll be right up there. You'll see that I had a kind of a crazy checkride experience for my VFR, but for my IFR, it was even crazier. So I'm usually a pretty good test taker. I don't know what it is, but usually I think pretty well inside of stressful situations. And so I went into my check ride thinking, you know, I can kind of bluff my way through and it'll all work out. And so that's kind of what I did with the ground portion, because honestly, when I was doing my check ride, I kind of knew it. But at the same time, there was just some stuff that I didn't hold on to super well. For example, reading METARs. You know, the simplest thing, I've been doing it forever, but I get into my check ride and he's asking me these simple METARs and I'd been reading them encoded via ForeFlight for so long that I couldn't even read some of these more simple METAR decodings uh, for for this weather that he found out in Texas. And so I was I was struggling with my ground and so right off the bat, I was off on a, on a rough foot. And so we get up into the air and I'm flying with the foggles, but What's great about it is I, I took off, we were, we were going through the patterns, we were doing everything, I was doing really good. Um, everything was working out fine, I did the whole procedure, I did the precision approach, we did an RNAV approach, it was working out great. But this particular airport had a VOR approach. And for those of you who haven't done a VOR approach, they're extremely annoying um, because they're not very accurate. Uh, you know, you rarely have them anymore, so you don't really do them that often. I'd never really practiced them. I've done this exact one maybe once um, in my entire training. And so we're doing this VOR approach. And in the particular airport I'm at, there are two runways. And they're kind of like, they're not a perfect 90. They're like kind of kitty quarter. So one goes uh, northwest and southeast. And one goes like more due north and due south. And so they're kitty corner. And so he tells me to set up the VOR for uh, one runway, the one that's going pretty much due north. So I set up all my, my approaches and everything. Well then, Tower tells us for routing and everything that they want us to do a different runway because it's better with the wind or whatever. And so as we're coming around, and they're vectoring us way out because they had jets coming in, and it's kind of a small airport, but it has a tower, and so they put their newbies there to train um, their people who are just getting into ATC. And so they didn't really know what they were doing. They were vectoring us all around, and I had my foggles on this entire time. And so we, we start coming in, and I had loaded on my iPad the one that he had sent me because I had loaded up all the approaches on my iPad, at the beginning of the check right he said here's what i think we're going to do and so i had loaded them all up i put the right one into the vor but i loaded up the wrong one on my ipad and so we're flying along and i'm looking at the complete wrong set of minimums i'm looking at the complete wrong um frequency i mean everything is completely wrong in my minimums and or about my approach and so i'm flying along and you know, I'm I'm just everything's starting to look a little weird because, like I said, they're kitty corner, and I always double check with the, with the GPS on my iPad because why not? It's there, right? I know you're not supposed to rely on it, but it's great for situational awareness. And so, all of a sudden, my iPad and my my uh, VOR is starting to get a little bit off with each other. Like if I if I'm on with my iPad, it's off with my VOR, and you have to understand VORs are not very accurate with like placement. And my iPad's GPS is more accurate than a VOR, okay? In most cases, it doesn't have WAS or it doesn't have, um, you know, RAIM. So you're not 100% sure it's always accurate or whatever. But I've never seen it where a VOR was more accurate than my iPad's GPS. And so we're coming down and my iPad's overlaying where I should be. And my VOR is saying something else. 
and I didn't realize I had loaded the wrong approach on my iPad. And what was unfortunate is the minimums that were on this approach, even though they weren't that far from each other, were way different. This one was like, just come down, get down there, and there's nothing, so you're good. This one, you had to level out for a little bit and then come down. And so I'm just getting down because I'm like, why not? You know, I might, well, might as well get down there. So as I'm descending, my DPE decides that's the moment he's going to do partial panel on me. So he knocks out my main VOR, which I was using a Garmin 530, which is super nice for VOR. And he takes out my Aspen, which is my glass cockpit. So now I'm down to steam controls all the way. VOR steam controls, uh, v uh, steam airspeed steam everything which usually would have been perfectly fine uh, partial panel is no problem for me um i i did it a lot and I, it was always fine but i was already f f just freaking out trying to figure out what was going on and he takes all my instruments away and so i am struggling at this point i'm like oh okay so i'm tuning in my vor because i had forgotten to do that right and right when i tune in my vor it hit me. We were going the wrong direction because I was tuning in the wrong VOR. I was tuning in the one that's, that my iPad was going. I'm like, I wasn't this far off when he just canceled my 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 Garmin. And so all and while I'm trying to think about this, I'm still flying, and all this stuff is going in my brain. I can't see outside, and I look at my analog air my analog altimeter, and I'm so under minimums. I'm just I I'm under minimums. I'm like way out of the like I don't know. My DB didn't say anything. I was like, am I about to hit a tower or something? <laughs> We're under the minimum, you know? And so I shove in that power, I pull back, you know, and I'm trying to get up there and we're up and then we're down and then we're up and then we're down. And I went above, I, I got back to minimums. I didn't go too far under, fortunately. And I got back to minimums and we're flying, we're flying, we're flying. And I'm like discombobulated and, I, and I'm trying to figure it out. And finally, I just look at my iPad and I realize I have the wrong approach in there so i'm trying to oh man oh man i i failed so bad everything else was great my ils my rnf my hold it was dead on i was doing so good and i'm just like man i so failed so i load up the new approach and i'm still just struggling with those steam gauges you know because i'm still trying to fly while changing all this stuff you know and finally finally my dpe was said um, runway in sight, take off your foggles. And I threw off those foggles and I landed. And I got on the ground and I said, all right, lay into me. It was so bad, I was so upset. And he looked over at me and he said, that was pretty bad. And I said, I know. He said, you know what you did? I said, yeah, I went below minimums. I loaded the wrong approach. I wasn't ready for your partial panel. I mean, just so many things. I wasn't staying ahead of the airplane. Um, and he said, he's like, yes, but here are a few takeaways I have. First, Tower didn't know what they were doing. We requested a, a one approach and then they gave us the other. It was not a ideal situation with the Tower because they're newbies. They didn't know what they were doing. Secondly, you know exactly what you did. You got behind the airplane, you got discombobulated. And if you came back, if we went up again, you could do that approach flawless in the country. And I said, yeah, I know I could, you know. Now, now that I'm on the ground, settled down, I could do it flawlessly. He's like, I know you could. He's like, because you did everything else flawlessly. He said, if I was coming behind you in my 777, he flew Boeing 777s, he said, I would be completely confident that you're gonna get on the ground. You're not gonna be where you're not supposed to be. I'm not gonna run into you from behind in the clouds. Shooting those ILSs, shooting those RNAVs, and he's like, let's be honest, you're never gonna shoot in a VOR. I'm like, I know. He's like, you know, because VORs are phasing out, those approaches are phasing out. And like I said, they're not even that accurate. Your GPS and your iPad, 99% of the time is probably more accurate. Now you're not supposed to use it for navigation in the clouds, I get that. But in real world experience, your iPad is probably just as good or better as a VOR approach. And he didn't tell me all that, but he just said, they are kind of being phased out anyways. He said, what would happen is if I failed you, you'd come back, you'd do that approach flawlessly, but you would, it would require some extra training, more money, more time for me, everything. And when I know you can do it. And so he reached over and shook my hand and said, you're now instrument rated. And I was like, Whew. I was, I was so sure. 
I was done. I, <laughs> man, I went under minimums. I got discombobulated, you know. And fortunately, I had the wherewithal just to be able to like, okay, I'm sticking with it. And I was just kind of flying by feel. Like, I didn't know where I was going. I had the wrong BOR in there. I had the wrong, you know, and maybe I was using my iPad or what. I don't know what I was using, to be honest. We just somehow got there. And with partial panel and everything, and he said, you passed. And so I was IFR rated, and I, and I went, you know, I left that day. But something that was really drilled into me, and I talked about this in my previous video, was that never take for granted, like, never just laissez-faire into IMC conditions, instrument meteorological conditions. Um, instrument meteorological conditions are no joke. They are very serious. And so to this day, I've only flown in broken clouds. I haven't flown long distances in the clouds, partially because we have a lot of uh, cold weather. I'm in North Dakota, so we get icing all the time. And I just got my instrument rating last year. And so last summer, I was able to get in and out of the clouds a little bit. But um, icing is always a concern, you know. And so um, I haven't flown IMC that often. And so when I was coming back from Omaha to Beulah, I actually wasn't current. Uh, just the other day, I was coming back and I wasn't current, and there was these clouds. And it was so tempting, so tempting to shoot that approach into Hazen because it was just a thin layer. I knew these clouds are, are over a thousand feet above the ground. I knew there was no obstacles a thousand feet above the ground. I knew that I could get under those clouds, shoot that approach and have plenty of time to land. I, I, and these things were going around. It was warm outside that day, no icing. I was above a layer. All I had to do is break through this layer and I get there and I get to Hazen hoping to find a break in the clouds. And I literally, I have the approach loaded up in my, my Garmin 530, the RNAV approach, my autopilot can fly it. I, would, I had it loaded up, but I wasn't current. And I just have heard way too many stories of pilots trying to fly in the clouds. They're not current, they haven't done it a lot. They, you know, they aren't proficient and they end up dying. And that's where these stats come from, 86% fatality rate, and it's the highest weather-related cause for fatal crashes in aviation. So you know what? I turned around and headed to an airport that was showing clear, and it was. We, we got down, we landed safely, and um, you know what? I had to drive home. I had someone pick me up, it was an hour away, and I had to drive home, and it, was, it, it stunk. But that was my crazy story. Watch this video if you want to find out is aviation dying and if it's not up here yet just check out you know my channel down there and it might be down there thanks for watching this has been the aviator don't forget to like and subscribe see you in the next one